Hello, welcome. I think it's time to explain this. The world record. Or the improved world record. So, let's basically just watch it again. And I'll do commentary this time. So, okay. First up. I'm, if you don't like this, just don't watch it. But I'm going to explain everything. Okay. There are four classes. And the assassin is the fastest by far. In glitchless at least. I've tried gunslinger. Doesn't scale. Uh, guardian. Just... That's the tank, the ill, and the destroyer has some interesting things. Um, I don't think they crit often enough, or they crit the most important attack in the game often enough. They're probably not good enough. Okay, so we're going to pick assassin. They have mainly speed scaling. And a bit of strength, their physical class. Uh, Destroyer is also physical. Gunslinger is uh, a mage, because that makes sense. And the Guardian is everything? I don't know, it's basically a tank that's also a bit of a mage or healer, and that's also a slight physical threat. I don't know. They're super slow though. But yeah, we're going to pick Assassin. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, turn these things down because they increase FPS, which increases speed of the uh, increases the speed at which the game runs. Probably, I don't know. Doesn't really change much. The effects are also basically the same. So whatever. And we start time, as you can see here, uh, when we click start. And there's a, oh, let's, we're six seconds in, yes! <laughs> okay, uh, here's a cutscene that you can skip, as you can see. Um, it explains a bit of the lore of the game, it's quite interesting, and yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. This means that there is uh, some scripted dialogue in the at the start of the fight, or yeah, at the time that it pop up, pops up. And by pressing the spacebar, you get rid of it. It's basically the big mute button. It also mutes some... Uh, Hit uh, hit audio, uh, but yeah, ju basically holding spacebar makes the game slightly less interesting, but it's the fastest thing to do. But I'm not doing it. I'm probably wasting a couple of frames by not holding spacebar throughout the entire game. Yeah. That. Okay. Basically, what they say is. Watch out, he's angry. I'll hit him. Because this is a, a buff that increases his damage by 500%, or also, uh, which also means multiplies it by 6, which is quite scary. And he hits. That hurts. It's like less than half of my hit, hit points, but whatever. And he says, good job. Yeah, good job for getting hit. Uh, which he, uh, what you should have done is use the second attack, which you can see here, this is an attack. Or at least, it's something you can use. Uh, and it reduces damage by 70% for three turns. Which is quite useful at times. Uh, this is also our main attack for the turn. Uh, probably has some speed scaling, I don't know. It's strength based. Oh, something interesting I wanna talk about. Uh, can I... Come on. 
I want the frame advanced this. Close enough. So this is 17. Uh, should have been clear that it did 17, but whatever. Uh, the gunslinger also does 17, which is why I think there's some speed scaling to it. The guardian does 16 at level 1, which means that due to the 48 hit points you can still free shot, so that's nice. And the destroyer, who has the ma most strength of all characters, does 15. And doesn't free shot. I hate it. And yeah. An uh, item drop is zero, always, you can't drop an item. Here, oh, I forgot to mention, the first fight is a lie. It, there is, uh, there's something wrong because you didn't see it, but it, a crit, uh, there's probably about 15%, maybe 20% chance of crit. A crit does 23. And if you, uh, that's an increase of uh, no, sorry, crit does 22, which is an increase of 5 damage. Uh, and if you, we hit him, uh, hit this one, which is level higher, same enemy. Uh, if we hit him 3 times, that would do 51. So, only if, uh, if it does exactly 22 or more, uh, a crit, a crit would actually save a turn. But he's a level higher. Let's see. Do I crit him this time? Nope. Her crit actually does 23. So something about the defense is just wrong. I don't know. Okay, so. 45 seconds in. Yes. <laughs> uh, we have four options for our, uh, level up skill. Um, Magic Bolt, which is the uh, most right one here, uh, is the one used for Gunslinger routes. It's the mage attack. Uh, aggression is actually somewhat useful. We'll see it at two points later in the game. Uh, it increases strength. It's a buff, basically. Uh, Iron Skin is useless. It's um, it increases health and physical defense, and there's one character in the game that uses it, and it's super annoying, and during this run, you don't see it, luckily. Uh, and there, there's Smash, which is quite bad. It It's better than the Quick Strike that we used to run. It's yeah. Uh, the problem is with the physical build, the good attacks are... These two, maybe, uh, these two are the like the DPS. Uh, Sunder here is also quite useful, and Break is fine. Wound is really good, uh, casually. It's uh, it's slow because a, a damage over time ability, or dot, uh, it takes an extra turn. So, or. Not an extra turn, takes an extra second, uh, just the animation alone, and that sort of hurts. Um, other than that, there really isn't anything else. There's like, uh, it's this one? I don't know. I believe this one does, uh, uh, is also purely physical, and this one is I believe physical and magical together I'm not sure and there are some very minor things Murder we're not going to use any of those we're going to stick to this entire route so uh, talking about smash it's uh, it's it's an attack that is slightly better than a quick strike but it costs 15 focus, it's called in this game, but I'm going to also refer to it as mana. Uh, we start with 100 mana, or focus, so we can exactly smash 6 times, and then we're done. Luckily this won't matter until the 
second to last fight of zone two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to equip six of those. You can equip eight, but you can't use eight. Uh, so we have enough room for uh, quick strike and suppression, which are not really that useful, but whatever. So yeah, that's it. Bit of menuing. And I believe this one is fixed again. The this one is what it should, uh, what the uh, enemy should be. So the first fight is just a lie. Yeah, that, that's. Oh, that's the first uh, time an item drops. That's. Uh, when an item drops, you find it here. You have to click to actually take it. Um, yeah, here it says choose the ones you wish to keep by clicking them. Uh, and this is uh, so gloves that give plus one strength, and that's going to be relevant, but not yet. The zombie, uh, you kill the zombie first because he actually. He actually gives good info. Uh, uh, green one, and this is basically green. It's blue, but whatever. Uh, that's one. That one is poisonous, or the one has venom. Or I believe he actually says it's correct. It it should be venomous because he attacks him and then he becomes poisoned. So that's venomous. Poisonous would be the other way around. As so. He attacks him, er, uh, he attacks him, and then he gets poisoned, or he gets yeah, poisoned. Then he is poisonous, and if he attacks him and he gets poisoned, then he is venomous. Okay. Quick explanation, but whatever. He is venomous, and he's somewhat scary because dots cost an extra second, so you kill him first. They're both two shots, so whatever. And the 30, 36 doesn't matter. And I just noticed I've been pointing at the screen for a couple of <laughs> explanations. Okay, so <coughs> we just hit 39, or yeah, something money. Uh, it's euros. Um, there are uh, there's a range of money you can have because money isn't fixed. The money you earn isn't fixed. Um, so you can get, I believe I once got 34 here, that's the lowest I've ever gotten, and I think you can get 43 as well. Um, everything above 37 is uh, means you can sell the pipe, which we've been using as our main weapon for free, and then buy this fire axe. Uh, everything above 35 means you can sell these boots which give plus one speed and you'll also be fine. Uh, the pants also give strength and strength is important. So 34 basically means a reset. <laughs> yeah, it's that bad. But yeah, we can now sell the pipe and get the fire axe which give plus six strength. And that's somewhat useful for this fight because it turns these three shots into two shots. And they, yeah, they poisoned. Here. I wanted to hover it. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so now we. Uh, oh, that wasn't very clear. Let's retry to. We leveled up. We're going to put a second point into strength, which increases its damage by a little bit. It's better than trying to get here or something because the, yeah, the the next actual DPS move is this one. That's just not worth it. A uh, wound is somewhat fine, but yeah. Uh, we're going to put a second, uh, another point into strength. Puts our strength up to 31, which causes 
this to be the best fight of the game because 76 crit for which kills the zombie and this it, this time it's actually accurate too I'll do that and 57 which kills them by plus one as well and critting him actually saves a little bit of time because of that he actually said something after three turns but if you uh, uh, if you finish the fight before that then he doesn't say it and now the final boss of this zone which lore wise oh uh i want to notice uh, show something he has 793 health because he's level 99 and that's it the enemies don't actually target him he, they're impossible and he can't and then now he's level zero with one hit point because lore wise he has to die so They had to do something for lore, and it screwed something else up. So, uh, basically what happens is due to his zero speed, or level zero, and he also, therefore, uh, probably has one speed, uh, we're slower uh, than them, which uh, is calculated by our average speed compared to their average speed. Which means that uh, they go first, basically. They're, they attack first. Um, yeah. Uh, however, there's something wrong with the game and that uh, turn order gets recalculated after every round. So they go, then our, it's our turn. And after they kill Lewis, uh, his speed doesn't matter anymore, and Sonny actually outspeeds them on average, which means that Sonny goes first. So it's their turn. They all attack Lewis because lore, uh, and then Medic kills him. The other two skip their turn. Then Sonny gets a turn. Then speed gets recalculated. Sonny is faster. Sonny gets a turn, and then they go. Which means we get a double turn here. Kill. Uh, more dialogue. And then we get two turns. And we can kill the medic. And that's basically the only reason why this fight is doable. <laughs> Technically, nah. This, is also, this also isn't a fight where... Uh... The 7 smash would be useful because 6 smash and uh, thingy is also good. Okay, so... That's unfortunate. There's a 50-50 shot. Or, uh, or you also... Uh, you always get some weapon. You get either... Uh, yeah, this is uh, close enough. Let me... Good enough. You'll always get either this weapon, which is a mage weapon uh, with 50% chance, or this weapon, which is a physical weapon with 50% chance. You want this one because we're physical, basically. And it's just a 50 50, and that's a uh, uh, we can't RNG manip at all, so there's nothing we can do. It doesn't. It loses a bit of time, but not awful. Uh, I sell it and then save the game because there's a chance I need to reset here. Uh, oh. Let me uh, try to explain it. Um, so we already uh, showed that this is an item store. This is the story fight quest thingy, uh, and this one's new. That's a training fight. Um, to make uh, experience really nice, I'm going to do two training fights, but not exactly right now. I'm going to do one right now, uh, which levels me up, then level up again, then do a training fight again. And 
and that causes experience to be amazing uh, and it's comparable to the, my previous route which had four training fights so I basically skipped two of them um, but uh, there's a one in three chance that you get an enemy called the uh, uh, samurai and you can't kill it it will kill you so that's reset or yeah I'm just going to restart the game until I don't get it which is why I want to save here because otherwise I have to menu to go back here because I would get spawned on the ship so I'll take the time to sell this and save because otherwise I need to do it anyways and yeah that was a samurai and thank you armor games and that's a samurai again let's try again and this is the hunter oh uh, it has set PCI that's the same group the uh, the final fight of the boat is from uh, if you get the sword uh, in its what's it called uh, lore text or not lore uh, uh, flavor text it says uh, what said PCI stands for and there's no other place in the game where it does uh, it stands for zombie pest control incorporated and since we're a zombie uh, yeah that, that's not great uh, he has a heal uh, the hunter he'll come back so I'll explain what he does uh, he can do that it's always hit it's fire damage uh, he has a stun he has a normal attack that's it and he gave us his uh, helmet which is absolutely useless but it or not completely useless but it's better than nothing that's a good crit that I believe that saves the turn I believe it still saves the turn probably and we just continue uh, I used to grind for uh, four training fights before this fight especially because uh, I would get level 5 before this fight and if you get anywhere near decent items uh, your smash will do 102 and one shot these and now there are two shots and I missed which is also not great uh, this is quite a time loss but whatever let's just run it that that saves the turn again that's good basically you can't RNG manip in this game so yeah every RNG, every good luck every bit of good luck is great and I'm going to buy the uh, these are the assassin uh, armor this is the assassin armor we haven't actually seen the assassin yet um, uh, but it's basically what we're trying to do with uh, speed and strength uh, and physical piercing uh, is what it gives us and the armor at least and I believe vitality as well or no physical defense uh, and yeah that's basically what we're trying to do uh, I'm going to explain piercing probably later once it's actually somewhat relevant probably next fight uh, samurai is annoying because he has a heal uh, he has void which we can also get which is a 9 turn debuff we'll actually show that later as well um, uh, it deals damage and increases damage taken by quite a bit and it's somewhat useful uh, he also has an ice smash which is I believe the actual term for it and it hurts it, it a crit would probably do around 80 now and including void which does 20 plus a 20 dot uh, 
20 damage per turn dot that, that that kills us and as you can see it he also has high health or high uh, well relatively high compared to everyone else here so this fight can be scary luckily we're high enough level that it's not really or we've leveled up but as a training fight they're unbeatable basically and that's void that's scary crit is good i smash if that crit that would have killed us and i would have probably reset the run <laughs> that's how bad it is luckily the crit chance isn't great and uh, he gives us armor which is somewhat useful so I'll equip it maybe that wasn't the greatest idea but whatever slight time loss okay it's probably the time to explain piercing because what he just did is he used an attack called shadow blend uh, which increases his speed by 500 percent or multiplies by six again um, f and that's for three turns it says four but it's uh, every buff or debuff like this ticks down at the end of your turn so it's three four of his turns three of my turns um, so uh, what speed does is it decreases hit chance it uh, or chance that you get hit it increases your chance to hit uh, that's basically just a compar comparison of speed the hit chance uh, and it's increased and I believe two points of speed increases piercing by one or maybe it's vice versa one point of speed increases piercing by two uh, so he now has incredibly high piercing uh, and what that does is it uh, mainly increases crit chance uh, maybe it's crit damage I believe it's mainly crit chance uh, then it also increases crit damage and a little bit of base damage as well so basically it's cubic scaling which is amazing and yeah so we want what we basically want is that uh, we have good base damage and good crit chance uh, or crit damage for maximum damage which means high speed and high strength luckily we already have high strength uh, high speed so We'll be focusing on strength most of the game. And piercing, of course. And as you'll see, there's one attack that we will always crit. One of one attack we will crit most of the time. And yeah, you'll see later. Uh, but he's basically unhittable. Yeah. Well, he isn't. He's there's like a what ten percent chance maybe, and he has a approximately one hundred percent chance to crit. Luckily, I survived that. I would have used suppression if I didn't. I'm sort of good at this game. I know my limits. And now it's time for a training fight. Ghost Assassin is good because that, and that's free money and we can buy uh, we want both of these weapons eventually this one gives uh, 4 strength and 4 speed, this one gives 12 strength and 2 speed but th this is a primary weapon this is a secondary weapon um, we can't equip uh, this one plus the axe and the axe gives 6 strength so it's a difference of two strength versus two speeds and it's probably wrong what I did I should have probably gone for the uh, the blue sword okay and yeah 
this is not the highest you can get. You can get up to 200 on the GSG-9 assaults. I have no clue what GSG-9 stands for. Uh, and the ZPCI Hunter, you can get up to 184 crit, which doesn't one-shot it. And that's with perfect build. Crit doesn't kill, I believe. This fight is generally a bit closer. It doesn't mean it's difficult, but it's or inconsistent, but it's generally really close. And that's a mistake. And I'm going to explain it. Um, frost zombies are scary, sort of. Uh, they have a one turn stun. Which is not a move we can get. We can get something that looks exactly the same, but is a two turn stun, so it's different. They also have the ice smash, uh, and they can poison, and they can normal attack as well. Um, oh, and they can suppress. Uh, we haven't used suppression ever, but we can also do that, um, and it's annoying. Uh, Currently, if we crit, we kill either one of them, and I we two-shot either of w one of them. However, there's something interesting with the AI going on here. Um, the AI is more likely to do uh, to use offensive abilities when there are multiples, or they're basically completely. Uh, they basically have a 0% chance to use a defensive ability when there are multiples. So he won't. now that he's really low, he won't suppress to tank a hit. Um, the issue is, if we two-shot the top frost zombie who has 7 more health, uh, he won't suppress. And then after the, we attack the frost zombie that's lower, this one, he will suppress, and we will still one sh uh, one shot him through that without a crit. And I b don't believe that's the case with the other one. So this basically wasted the turn. Uh, I'll probably show uh, showcase other enemies that have the same problem that they won't heal or won't suppress or whatever when there are multiples, because almost every enemy has that. But not all enemies have defensive abilities. That's Ice Smash Miss, that's good. Uh, the problem with the Frost Zombies is that it, you can't one-shot them. Er, yeah. Except if you crit. So if you hit one and don't crit, they can go stun, Ice Smash. Okay, skip turn. Ice Smash, stun. Uh, no. Ice Smash, stun. And you skip a turn again, and you're basically at 10 hit points, and it's their turn, and you're dead. And there's nothing you can do. And the chance of this happening is very low, but that's basically a reset. And there's the sun. There's the normal attack. He hasn't used poison yet, which is nice. Okay. Uh, he didn't suppress this time. There is a chance that if they want to suppress, they won't. And I believe it's uh, you need to put them in a exactly the right range of uh, health uh, health percentage, and then it's a I don't know fifty percent chance. So the odds of this happening is somewhat low. Maybe it's a 30% chance that they still don't suppress. I don't know. Uh, but now that he doesn't, I can two-shot him and save the turn back. Which is nice. Also notice the amazing audio. Okay. We have a teammate. Lore-wise, he is getting chased by these hunters because he's a zombie and he has this medic armor which is stolen. Uh, and we help him out because we hate the hunters as well. Um, 
Interestingly, they made did a remake of this game, and he does he isn't a zombie anymore. In this game, he's purple, which is quite funny, I think. Uh, yeah, these hunters are two shot. They also have a heal, and they are actually. Uh, one of the two examples that I can think of right now that of enemies that want to heal in multiples. Uh, the ZPCI Elite is the other one that I can think of right now. A oh, and the specific medic type characters. So now we can finally get full build. Uh, Ghost Assassin is one of those that doesn't use his defensive ability if the samurai is alive. So he won't use the Shadow Blend, which increases his speed by a lot because it's considered a defensive ability. That's good. Uh, as you could have seen, and that's third here, uh, a crit does 206, and a non crit does 139, uh, which means that we need crit, non crit to two shot these dudes, which is not a great chance. It's fine, uh, but we only have six smashes, and there are three of them. So we need to crit non crit all of them. With uh, so we can avoid using quick strike if Farah doesn't attack. Um, this fight is not pretty sometimes. Luckily, f uh, Farah has some good abilities, and let's go over that as well. Uh, he has Electro Bolt, which is an attack we can also get. It uh, does some electric damage and dispels a buff from the enemy. And that's somewhat useful. Um, that's nice. Um, he also has a poison attack, which is the only allied poison attack in the game, which is relevant for casual runs. Um, but... Uh, casual 100% runs, but this isn't a 100% run, this is any percent, so that's not relevant. The poison attack is useless, uh, wastes a lot of turns, it, yeah, that's not great. Uh, he has a normal attack, he has f uh, two heals, uh, one of them dispels a debuff uh, and costs 15 focus. And one of uh, and has no cooldown, and one of them has eight turns cooldown, costs no focus and doesn't dispel a uh, debuff. And of course, he uses the one that has an eight turn cooldown immediately. If he yeah, uh, if he wants to heal. Um, what else is there? Uh, oh, I almost forgot the most important one. He has the attack Re-Energize, which is changed for him. This is an attack we can also get, but it's really far into the, uh, into the, uh, skill tree. Uh, what it does for us, it is... It uh, increases our focus by 40 on the 10 turn cooldown. And that's it. Uh, what Vera does is he, uh, he gives you a buff of 10 focus regeneration for 9 turns. Which is really good. And it's the only reason Veradux is actually amazing for this run. Uh... If I remember this run correctly, uh, we actually die here because he doesn't like, he doesn't heal. 
Yeah, that's. And we're dead. He technically has two re-energizers, by the way. One for him and one for the ally. And they're both on the 20 turn cooldown. That's attack. You can be lucky and Vera's, uh, if you double non-crit, Vera's Electro Bolt, Bolt kills. Also, his heals for right now are amazing, and they'll all. Uh, I believe in the like, in the only fights where it doesn't matter, they become a bit lacking. But otherwise, they're amazing. Oh, I forgot to mention something. Uh, after this fight is over, I'll show show something. He didn't heal, which is really weird. He should heal. Okay. So he won. But there's something I want to show that you might have missed. That. Crit healing. I have no clue. I do not understand at all. It's. It's based on speed probably. But that's due to heal piercing I think. Which is not a stat you can look up. I really have no clue how that works, but it works, and you'll probably see it a couple of times. So let's skip forward. Final battle. Okay. Oh, I forgot to. Okay, we leveled up just before the final battle, which is why I like this uh, this route, this experience route. Uh, we get to level up just before. This fight, uh, just before the rock star, we get nine. Uh, I believe it's just after the council that we get ten, which is a bit meh, but whatever. Uh, no, it's before the council. Uh, just after the council, we get eleven, I believe. Uh, and just before the scariest battle, which isn't actually a split, the Baron, uh, we get twelve. So, uh, this experience route is amazing for uh, level up spots. Um, but this level up, yeah, we don't want to put a point into wound because that's consistent and slow. Uh, I've routed a, uh, a fight with uh, where you put a point into aggression as well and place it over uh, suppression as you can hear um, basically the plan is uh, and we'll let's show that here um, the sensei has uh, oh I forgot one thing here I put a point into vitality which increases my health by 8 which is maybe relevant sometimes um, Okay, he has an he has a couple of moves. He has a heal on a very high cooldown, and he loves using it. Um, and his heals for, uh, I believe, two hundred something. And if it's crit, if it crits for three hundred and seventy. Um, so that's a lot of health. And we have a. Basically, a maximum damage, which is six mashes. So we don't want his heal to be very useful. So uh, first off, we quick strike him to attempt to provoke his heal, and then aggression and just hammer down and hope he dies. Um, he also has void, which hurts uh, because he actually is a mage or something and yeah it uh, the initial damage also is quite a lot um, he has ice smash which will literally kill sony as a one shot and there's nothing we can do um, he has 
he has enraged like the zombies do uh, that increases his next attack by 500 percent and there's also nothing we can do about that just hope he hits Farah and does with uh, void or something because that doesn't even kill him um, what else I believe that's it. Oh, he has a normal attack, which somewhat hurts, and a one turn stun, which he has two of. That's his build. So, quick strike first, and Farah does something, whatever, void. And now we hope that Farah does something and uh, Sensei heals himself, which happens, I believe. Yeah, he heals 201 and crit is 370 or something, which is bizarre. And now we just hope to get at least two crits. The one crit is nice. Uh, and this is somewhat fast. I think this is the fastest way to do this. And yeah, and that's basically what we hope for. And he can't heal here because of cooldown, so he's dead and we've lost some time compared to the best splits as you can see here but whatever uh, so final zone and we're 10 minutes in and this run is half an hour long yeah um, so uh, this area has a couple of scary physical damage specifically only physical damage dealers uh, there are physical stat uh, physical elemental uh, attacks I believe but yeah uh, and they, they also have those physical earth attacks maybe there are others but whatever I believe poison is physical but I'm not sure um, and we can buy armor here we can buy a full set which decreases uh, all basic if we buy the full set we decrease uh, physical damage and earth damage to zero actually to one but yeah uh, but we do want some defense because we don't want to get one shot by everything so I buy the helmet and there are multiple reasons for specifically the helmet because uh, well uh, we currently have assassin armor which gives uh, seven no this gives three physical piercing this also gives three physical piercing this gives seven maybe these two are five this is seven and these two give physical defense so the boots and the gloves are the worst however in these items these two are also the best and uh, they cause us to not get one shot the most because they have an extra point of vitality um, so we buy either one of those and the chest plate here is better so we buy the helmet here um, yeah. uh, a second reason for a spe uh, exactly one of these two is because uh, we want what will be known as striker armor which is basically destroyer slash assassin armor uh, this one's part of it these are the boots here uh, the which we can equip at level 8, we're still level 7, but after 3 fights we're not. Um, the pants can drop and they can also be equipped at level 8, the gloves are, can drop and can also be equipped at level 8, but the chest plate and the helmet, they can also be dropped, uh, but we can only equip them at level 10. So, at the time where it matters most, we just yeah, we. Uh, we uh, we can equip these and 
and get rid of one of those and that's basically explanation uh bad one but whatever uh these weapons can also be equipped to level seven which is nice for the training fights and we're selling all of these because money is actually somewhat important Uh, another thing is that we put a point into vitality previously. Uh, sometimes, if you have, uh, I believe it's uh, the hunter chest plate, which is almost uh, comparable. The uh, Sensei's ice smash non crit doesn't kill. Which is somewhat useful. Maybe it's the helmet also. Maybe the helmet also works. Um, and here, this is his basic attack, his normal attack. He loves using it, and it does 64. And if he uses it three times, and we don't get healed, which is chance of almost zero, we now live at exactly eight health. And if we didn't put a point into vitality, we would exactly die. So yeah. Um, he can do that, he can do a wound, uh, he can do disruption. Uh, oh, wound first, it's same damage basically, and the dot and then damage amp on us. Um, disruption in decreases our focus. He has, I believe, a level 3, which decreases it by 19, which is really evil. Um, Uh, he has a heal for, I believe, 500 crit or something, which is bullshit. Because he also has very high health compared to the uh, other enemies. Um, he has... Uh, I believe he has Sunder as well, which is... a. Uh, damage and a damage amp for 9 turns but no damage over time which is literally why it's better than wound because it deals less damage it's weird but whatever maybe I'll think of something that's wound that's disruption That's his heal for 370 non crit. And then, oh, the Sensei does 300, around, uh, around 300 non crit heal. And the problem with disruption is now we're out of focus and he decided not to heal for some reason. I don't know. I have no clue. Shaman of Blades isn't really fond of healing, I believe. And that was amazing luck. So he can drop his entire set of armor, which is good. Uh, he is one of the four enemies that can spawn, and we want him because he is the scariest. Uh, and he gives exactly the armor we want, and other armor we just have to sell because it's useless. Um, he... Uh, also, and all training fights like this, have a 5% chance of dropping this amazing weapon, which I believe we got really lucky and, lucky and this is the secondary weapon, secondary arms, uh, and we can even equip it to level 7 already, uh, and this is also the helmet, so that's meh, but it's fine, um, but this is amazing, uh, yeah, basically 5% I believe, maybe it's less, I didn't equip it because no clue, but it's also lucky that we got uh, Shaman of Blades again, and we just basically do the same fight. During these games, I like looking at Sonny's hit points, which are up here, uh, because they drop here and then go up, and 
it, it's really weird that we can actually survive uh, everything. I don't think uh, I don't think that this happens in the in this entire run, but if Sonny dies, but Faradex doesn't and wins, that's good enough. We don't need to survive. The entire team doesn't need to survive at least. Uh, also, we we're not doing a training fight. This is actually the first fight of the uh, the story, which is also Shaman of Blades, which is useful because he drops the best items. So we have a consistent Shaman of Blades encounter early on, so we can somewhat get okay items. I probably haven't uh, hadn't realized that I could equip the sword at level seven, and that's the body armor which is level. Oh, body armor we can equip at level ten, which is fine. And we go up to level eight, which means uh, that we used this is big button, which is the respect button, which uh, we can only use five times. Uh, but it completely uh, gives us back all our ability uh, points and our stat points, or some of our stat points. The stat points we've invested, we get one every uh, round. So now that we're level 8, we can take 7 abilities, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and get up to here, which is attack CDG or, or actually it's coup de gras which is French uh, and that attack is basically why we're uh, the assassin let's see if I actually hover over it or not nope. um, coup de gras has uh, has uh, does 350 plus some strength scaling, I believe it's 1.5x which is basically what Smash does I believe um, and it has high piercing which uh, of, or it increases piercing so high crit chance high damage uh, high crit damage on a high damage attack and it's slightly less accurate, but due to our massive speed, that's fine. Um, okay. Other attacks we're going to use. Let's put the points in there. Uh, Sunder, which we've all, we've all, uh, I've already explained. Master Strike, which is probably the best attack in the game, other than CDG because it's a nuke, but it's the best DPS attack. Uh, it's basically strictly better than Smash. Uh, it uh, costs 12 focus. It it, it has speed scaling. Um, so the damage is approximately the same, uh, but it ha has high hit chance and high crit chance. Uh, so the damage is generally a lot higher. I believe even non crit is higher now. Then one point in smash. Um, yeah, we're, uh, we can only equip it twice, so we equip it twice. Then CDG, break, which is a one turn stun, which also deals quick strike damage or something on the three turn cooldown, costs 10 focus, and it's really useful because, for example, if someone enrages, we can break them and they can't uh, move for a turn, and then their enrage is gone. And smash because there's nothing better, <laughs> and we have an open slot because we can't equip any of these again. And smash is somewhat useful at times. Oh, it's level eight. Never mind. I'm just wrong. We can only equip the sword at level eight. And this is technically a mistake because he has a heal. We I should probably use Sunder first. Uh, here I was doubting if uh, Smash would kill because 
now that we have uh, only one point in smash it the damage is down to less than hundreds probably crit 166 we used to non crit 166 but interestingly quick strike actually becomes useful again uh, here's a devourer which has I didn't actually explain what the enemies can do. Devourer is basically a zombie, but has high health and can drop everything. And we're basically full build now. Gold uh, money doesn't matter anymore, and now completely. Uh, okay, let's explain what these do. Th uh, this, by the way, is casually the. Uh, it's not the hardest fight in the game because the Baron is. It's not the second hardest fight in the game, probably. I think the. I think the super team before that is. No, no, probably not. I think this is the second hardest fight in the game. Mainly because you don't respec casually, and because we respec, we can do this. Goodbye. And now the fight is trivial. Yeah. Uh, totem. I oh, I didn't explain. Whatever. Uh, rock golem. Let's explain what the rock golem is. Um, uh, rock golem uh, is the reason why we bought the helmet. Uh, has only physical and earth attacks. Uh, and. Does uh, he has break, sunder, uh, no, enrage, uh, earth smash? Uh, he also has master strike, I believe, and a normal attack, and I believe that's it. And high health and high damage, like really high damage. We probably increase uh, decrease all damage they do to Sony at least by. 30%? I don't know. Actually, maybe it's... I believe it's actually... Uh, I believe it's actually 50%. So that would have done 100. And he... Uh, he also enraged. With that damage. With his high damage. And we don't kill, but that's fine. And that's his lowest damage attack. Now yeah, maybe we don't decrease by 50%. And that's really scary because we don't have breaks, so I actually use suppression for the first time. Luckily, Faradux dispels it. But that's 70% damage reduction on top of the 30% we already had. Let's say it's 30%, I'm not sure. Um, and he still did 22. Let's say that he should have done 100 something with it. Oh, maybe not then. I don't know how math works. Okay, second point. We put second point in CGT, which increases its crit damage by approximately 100, which makes uh, boss fights like these really easy. Uh, this is Rockstar, uh, which I really wanna m make say something. Whatever. Uh, interestingly, I. Someone recently found out that his kit is uh, he has increased physical and earth defense and had basically the kit of a rock golem. He is basically a rock golem, rock star. That that, that took that that took me approximately four years. Nah, maybe. No, I've been running this two years now. I've only recently found that out. Uh, other than the rock golems things, he also has iron skin and suppression, which is really evil. So we want to get him down to where uh, CDG crits kills it. However, it's this is the only fight in the game where CDG isn't 
consistent decritting because Rockstar has such high physical defense. So basically just hope and we'll see. Sunder is a damage amp so we use that. He has break which is painful. Master strike him for a bit. Must strike him again for a bit. And now this is about where... Oh, he also has blood focus, which increases focus by like 50 or something. It costs 3% of his max health. I don't know why he used it. Whatever. Uh, this is about where CDG sh crit should kill. But if it doesn't, we're in, we're in big trouble. So I'm a bit safe here. A little bit. Luckily it crits. And it he dropped a mage weapon which is better for Farah because he's sort of a mage. I don't know, he's maybe he's close to a guardian. Whatever. It, it's fine. It's the second best weapon he can carry. But we kill the uh yeah. We now do more than six hundred so we can one shot this healer. Shaman of Life, which is the, I believe this is the first time we encounter Shaman of Life. Uh, Shaman of Life is completely useless except that he has permanent healing and is a bit annoying. But he's dead. Uh, Totem has some projectiles which he can use and some heals and is not very friendly. Uh, But we basically go for the totem because it's a two shot. And that's it. And then Rock Golem is free. Because he only does 128. And I believe that's Master Strike. And 180. Which it uh which is still decreased by approximately 30% due to our build. Which showcases the extreme power of the rock golem. I keep picking up stuff which costs me a couple of fla frames every time. Yeah. The virus are... Yeah, they're boring. They have this attack. Which is basically a quick strike, but not quite. And they have a projectile poison whatever probably should have used quick strike there maybe not I don't know ah we're at the elite he is really annoying uh, elite is the elite is really fast um, has high health has a heal stun uh, likes healing Uh, and yeah, does some damage. His stun, I believe, is his high. That one is his the highest damage ability, which hurts, and he heals. And it really doesn't matter what order I do things in, except Sunder first. And uh, during the game, I'm uh, looking at this focus bar a lot uh, because I want to make sure that I can actually use my abilities. Okay, we're at level 10, which increases third point in CDG, and we can equip these, which is really nice. And we equip the gloves for shaman plates and whatever. Okay, so now our CDG damage is 800-ish. Let's see. 806. Uh, and we one-shot the Shaman of Death. We, sh we should one-shot the Shaman of Death in this case because he does more damage. Not by much, but a bit. Uh, he's the mage. Basically the gunslinger. 
type enemy of this area. And we basically just hope that Shamrock Blades dies and doesn't heal for 600 because yeah. Sometimes I wait a little bit because I'm considering what I want to do, but generally that's not an issue. Okay, here we go for the shaman. This is actually the only time where we don't try to go for the healer first. Actually, no, not the only one time. And that's a reset. <laughs> it doesn't, uh, CDG doesn't always hit, but it has like 90 plus percent accuracy. Let's say 95. Uh, we need to make sure that for one single turn Shaman of Life doesn't use his uh, blue ball of death attack which doesn't really do much damage but it increases or it decreases her damage by 20% which is annoying. Okay, that's a lot of items. But here's the council. Okay, let's go back. Okay, we have one CDG, maybe two if we're lucky, uh, because they cost 35 focus, and uh, if we we do want to, uh, so we have used 70, uh, Sunder would be, well, we're probably going to use Sunder, 74, we have 26 left, which is exactly two Master Strikes plus two, and this, the two are useless. So... If everything's perfect, also, yeah, whatever. If everything perf is perfect, CGG kills. Uh, Master Strike twice kills. Sunder, CDG. And some quick strikes because CDG has a cooldown of 8 turns. That's perfect. That's the perfect fight. And during this time, Verdux heals it uh, as a lot. Um, problem. Uh, the breaker can uh, use two attacks, and generally he doesn't. Generally he buffs himself and does one damage attack, and then he dies. But if he uses two attacks, we're dead. There's nothing we can do basically because these two together one shot Sonny and. That's it. Um, uh, oh, second problem. He has disruption and the heal and uh, re energize. That's basically the problems. And the Mender, we just have to kill because he heals for a lot and is annoying. So, kill. Good. Disruption. Okay, whatever. Uh, this is aggression, which is fine. He actually dies to one, which is good. But we do not have enough for uh, uh, CDG anymore. So, now comes a time of some sort of manip. grab a drink um, notice that uh, the only sort of RNG manip we have is we can try to increase the chance of Veradux doing something useful um, so he loves healing if he or we are at less than 70% health or something, he will basically always heal. Not always, because we actually died to that once uh, already during this run, during uh, the fight before the Sensei. But generally, he likes to heal. Um, he 
basically how it works is he has a fixed chance of using an uh, offensive attack and a fixed chance of using a defensive attack and his defensive attacks are heals and uh, and uh, re-energize and his offensive attacks are his attacks uh, and this gets uh, and afterwards heal gets uh, increase in priority if someone is at lower health that's basically how Faradux works um, and what we want to do is we want to make him re-energize so the plan is stay at full health or close to full health this is sort of almost full health probably not enough so I'm going to break him then suppress and then Sunder and quick strike probably and basically just hope that that works. Faradux will have been not now. Now, Sunder first. Faradux has an increased. Uh, Faradux now either attacks, which is somewhat useful, not really, but it's fine, or re-energizes one of us, and that's the preferred outcome. He decides to attack, but whatever. And I suppress and he heals. Yep, full health. Okay, so we're both at full health, and this would be the perfect time for a re energize. Would be great. I did not remember him actually doing this, <laughs> but that was somewhat funny. So, yeah, we're basically stuck quick striking him. <laughs> And this wastes a lot of time because, yeah, we got s ah, fixed. But we got slightly unlucky, not a lot. This is about what you'd expect. So, yeah. I don't really care about damage anymore. I want Sunder up, but otherwise, CG just kills. CGG just easily kills and that would be spit here and now we're down a minute that doesn't kill which is not great it's whatever that was actually a mistake I should have not gone for that and that's wastes a bit of time but whatever it's not that much couple of turn two or something I think it's interesting that smash is somewhat useful uh, second point in master strike also probably increases his damage uh, the damage by a hundred so in our damage kit it increases our damage by 200 or let's say per eight turns 400 which is a lot better than cdg but it's not a burst which is not as useful yeah, we're at 310 instead of like 200 200 low that's it and it almost guarantees to crit which is nice I've actually had, I believe it was two runs, or one run, that, uh, no it was two runs that I actually also uh, commentated, where I missed Master Strike, which is basically uh, the Gen 1 miss, 1 in 255. Yeah. Okay, uh, something interesting here, uh, there's a pop-up of some lore uh, uh, it talks about something and it includes a PCI uh, which is uh, how I know that the next fight is doubles a PCI elite and 
this fight is also somewhat scary. And you'll probably see that they like healing each other. And yeah, and they can do that. Luckily, that generally doesn't kill, which is nice. And they like using their focus, and their heal costs 22 focus, so... The top one probably won't heal. Okay, he did heal. But now he's done, or he can normal attack. And the bottom one can use one more attack, and then he's out as well. And... Quick Strike might do more damage than Smash now, I'm not certain. I really don't know. I think it's about the same. But the uh, focus doesn't matter because I was re energized. This is uh, the best music. One of the re basically one of the only reasons I run this game is this music. Um, also the re also the reason why every one of my uh, videos on this game is claimed by the creator of this music. <laughs> Whatever, it's fine. Okay, so uh, I forgot to mention something. Look at this health. 864, exactly. Okay. And sometimes you get. Uh, sometimes you get enough. Uh, you also get the gloves and this uh, special weapon, which is strictly better than the weapon you can buy. Uh, and then you might be able to CDG crit for more than 864. It's possible. It's not likely, but it's possible. And then he has two speech bubbles, but whatever. Skip both of those. He's not scary. The reason why he's interesting is now the medic has 864 and has the same defense, uh, physical defense values. Therefore. A CDG against him would do exactly the same, which is why this uh, the ambassador is a good place to test if you can actually one shot the medic. I like that design; it's nice. Um, unfortunately, we cannot, and if we try to, the elite will heal him, and the medic will heal himself, and it's awful. Interestingly, this medic does not really like healing. I don't know why. Uh, he likes attacking. Ba basically, he's basically the. Uh, he basically has the same likelihood of healing as the samurai or something from the previous zone. Uh, he goes low and then decides that healing is something he wants to do. Uh, the elite is a lot likelier to heal. But And there's also an interesting bug that can occur if we uh, get the medic low, that the elite uh, picks a heal to use but self-casts it, and then the medic thinks, oh, I'm going to get healed, I don't need to heal, which is really useful. But I don't think it happens here. I've seen it happen in this game once, I believe. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the elite. We've seen elite. The elite is scary. Uh, a medic is... Uh, basically a shaman of life. Sort of. I don't know. Shaman of life plus some damage abilities. Elite medic isn't really scary. Uh, no, who is scary is the sniper here. And the sniper is a weird build. He has uh, the stun from the elite, which does a bit more damage. The 
uh, the fire, the other fire attack from the elite also does more damage. He has enrage. Um, I can't think of anything else he has. Mainly because I one shot him generally right now. Um, however, what's very interesting is he does not have a normal quick strike type effect or attack. He doesn't have an attack that doesn't cost focus. So if he drops down to zero, he's done. So what you could do in theory is go after the medic first and then probably the elite afterwards, hope to tank the sniper and then finish him off last because he, he used everything and is done. Interestingly, Enrage costs 25 focus as well, so that's quite quick. And his all other attacks cost 15. So that's a strategy. I've never I've seen I've used it to good effect it maybe once or twice, but generally it's not really worth it. Problem problem two of this fight. Okay. The medic is slow. The sniper is, I believe, even slower. The elite is super fast. So what you would love to do is go for the sniper, then the medic, and then the elite is faster than the average of these two, and the elite gets a double turn. Which is not good. He has a uh, sizable chance of like probably 20% or something to kill Sonny at that time. But you just got to tank it. Hope it works. So yeah, uh, this is also. Uh, let's go a bit fast uh, for the next fight. This is the team that the uh, uh, that that should take down the Baron, or at least is asked to take down the Baron. But uh, and the Baron is the evil zombie mastermind or. Overlord that tries to control all zombies and they're trying to kill him and basically uh, there is a an, or there's an ally called the Paladin, Galleon's the Paladin, who asks for backup and they're the backup. Um, and we're just killing his backup right now. And Galleon the Paladin has uh, a quick strike type attack that does 2000 damage and he's an ally of us. And the Baron has 32,000 hit points. So our CDG of about a thousand and then we're done doesn't really use, uh, doesn't really help a lot. So what we do now is we get level 12 and I respec into a cleric. Uh, wait, sorry. Aggression, three points. This is a heal, three points. Uh, Flame blast is useless. Shatterbolt is a two turns, two turns done. And void, we already know. And f I'm going to max out vitality here, which is a somewhat new strat. Um, and this means that the uh, Baron doesn't generally one shot us, which is useful. Uh, void at one point basically uh, is a damage amp on the Baron and it stacks. Uh, Sunder, the problem with one of the only problems with Sunder is that, that it doesn't stack. Wound actually stacks, which makes Wound casually really good. Uh, void also stacks and is a 9 turn debuff and has not less than that cooldown. So Void is really good at amping up the damage. So is Aggression, by the way. And we'll see that for the next fight. Because the uh, Paladin, I believe it's exactly less than 2000 that he does. I believe it's 1740 or something. So save. And here's the Paladin. Doesn't do a lot. And we give him Aggression and he does 2800. And he gets stunned, which is why we have a heal. 
Wait, isn't there supposed to be three of it? Yes, we killed them. And this is the two turns done, which is really good. And I used the time to give him void. Also, th that, uh, that voiceover is really nice. This is my favorite enemy of the, in the game. Uh, and somewhat of a new strat for this fight is... Uh, not this. I hope to survive this, basically. Which happens. That was a stun, I believe. I hit this stun. And I'm not sure that this stun has increased hit chance. It might? I think it actually does. Um, and I'm not certain, but I think that if you're stunned, all attacks hit you. Or at least that, that would explain what happens next, because he hits. And he hits again for 3800. And then his thing gets removed, but whatever. I have nothing, so attacks you. And... I actually survived this fight. Generally, Sony doesn't survive this fight when I play it. So now, now I start to shake because I have a minute for the final fight. There's one more fight in the game left and I was a minute behind, but now I'm, I'm making up this time again. Now I think this run is actually possible, basically. And this might be something noticeable. Maybe. Uh, I put a, uh, max points into wound this time. Because of how the fight works. And I'll explain that once it starts. But uh, wound is better than Master Strike in this case. Because of something. Okay. Fight. He has less than 2000 hit points. Okay. CDG does... 800 ish something like that uh, without damage amp he also has 4000 focus and a heal which heals him for almost max HP max HP if he crits um, this heal costs a thousand focus so he can heal three times and we just basically have to kill him through three heals or we one shot him before he likes to heal which is before 50% which is doable and that's why we have wound to increase our damage above a thousand uh, also the reason why we attack him is because Faradox says we should And he enrages. Uh, I don't think we would have killed with uh, CDG there, but now we definitely do easily. And you saw the shaking a little bit, and that's time. And I just beat the world record by three seconds because of no good reason. And that's the entire video. Uh, and that's the game. I just thought of something I wanted to say, but now I forgot it. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, let's look at the uh, splits. Minus 6, plus 19, plus 34, plus 1 minute and seven seconds minus three seconds uh, this is a 28 25 and my sum of best is 24 57 uh, this and this is somewhat optimal sort of uh, every split I can approximate uh, except for the first one I've had a run that saves approximately one minute or on the council two, I believe. I believe the the previous run 
uh, the 20 minute wasn't even a gold split. So, uh, and this, uh, this split actually s still loses 37 seconds over my best split ever, which is interesting. Uh, but this, this generally, this was an amazing final split and I gained about two minutes because of uh, uh, re-energize RNG and council was not great but fine the uh, the super team of uh, uh, elite sniper and medic was very friendly actually so yeah uh, yeah I still want to get this below 28 and then I'll be happy. This uh, this is a lot better to run against. Because it feels good because I'll probably be ahead on most of my splits. So yeah, that's basically it. And with that I'll finish this video which... I don't know how long one and a half hours yeah Let, let's leave it here okay take care bye